Hello and welcome to the Encouraging Your Day YouTube channel. My name is Sandra and let's go for another round of Encouraged Knitting together. First of all, I'd like to thank you all for your sweet and kind words of encouragement and the comments that you left under my last two episodes. Uh, it really meant a lot to me and also that you subscribed to this channel and just, um, yeah, left me your kind words there. Thank you. What I'm wearing right now is also what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> it's the Novus Cardigan Chunky Edition that I've just finished before our trip. We've made a trip to Israel, my husband and I, and if you stay on till the end of the video, I'd like to share a few impressions of this very stunning and special country. Also, I'd like to talk about what I've got on my needles right now. It's the latest project that I hope I'll be able to finish before Easter. It's another cumulus blouse and I'm in desperate need of a cumulus blouse because I think for spring wear it's just such a perfect garment to wear as layers over a cute blouse with frill or just turtlenecks. So I need one. I need another one. <laughs> and I also like to talk about two projects that I finished a while ago and that I think are very beginner friendly. It's the Sunday Sweater Chunky Edition and the Sunday Sweater Mohair Edition that I've knitted. Because this isn't only a knitting podcast, but also one where I want to address the topic and the importance of emotional and mental health, in this, uh, in this episode, <laughs> I need to adjust my magic loop here. In this episode, I want to speak about intentional living. You may remember that in my last episode, the second one, I spoke about slow living and how I integrate aspects of slow living in my morning routine. But a friend of mine asked a very important question and that was, how do you make that happen? How do you integrate these things that actually fill your cup? How do you do that? And I want to talk about that and also the importance of taking that seriously. So yeah, this is what you will uh, what you will find in this episode, like a little table of contents here. <laughs> and let's go! So, what I'm wearing is the Novice Cardigan Chunky Edition by Petite Knit. And I've knitted it in the Sislege Tweed yarn, which is a very nice structured pattern, as you can see here, with these little colors, color bubbles <laughs> that change. And I've combined it with um, one strand of soft silk mohair by Knitting for Olive in Oat. And I'm very happy with this, uh, with this color pattern of the two yarns combined. Actually, I was a bit afraid that it would li look like a bit of dirty snow. But now my husband said it reminded him of Stracciatella Gelato and that stuck with me. <laughs> so it's actually a very sweet cardigan I'm wearing here and as you can see when I put it out like this um, I've only sewed on five buttons whereas in the pattern it's six that's because I've adjusted the length a bit so I wanted the cardigan to go basically up to my hip bone so I can wear it as a crop version and tuck it into high waist pants I like that style I think it's very relaxed and um, easy kind of cardigan style here. So this length really works good for me, whereas the one with the sixth button, the longer cardigan version, um, I didn't like so much. So personally, I, um, I like it better in this cropped sort of style, and I can recommend that with this yarn combination if you like it. And as I said, I, I was basically living in it this, these past weeks. I'm combining it with turtleneck shirts or long sleeve shirts, t-shirts, frilled blouses with cute colors. Um, it's just a very cool, easy, relaxed, but also a bit chic cardigan, I think. Depends on how you combine it. Sort of a fashion chameleon here. <laughs> um, and what's on my needles here? As I said, it's another cumulus blouse by Petit Knit. And I'm knitting it in two strands of soft silk mohair by Knitting for Olive. As you can see here. Hopefully. The collar is finished. My good friend Lydia 
um, made the color the color for me, which the iCord color here, which is very sweet because now I feel like I'm wearing my friend around my neck when wearing this sweater. And one sleeve is finished already. I have one more to go and a bit of the body. So fingers crossed that I will finish this for Easter because um, I like to wear it when I'm visiting my family. Right, and the colors I'm combining here is Trench Coat by Knitting for Olive, Soft Silk Mohair, and Dusty Honey, also from Knitting for Olive, Soft Silk Mohair. And these two combined make this beautiful, vivid pattern of beige and sort of, yeah, honey colors. I like it. It's like knitting honey. It's very sweet as well. <laughs> so I'm wearing a lot of desserts and treats here. Stracciatella gelato and dusty honey. <laughs> so why not? Okay, and I'm a fan of cumulus blouses. I've actually, this is my third one. The first one I've knitted gotten a bit big um, because I, I was new to the um, to the raglan sort of knitting, how to um, do the increases on the shoulders. I think I added more stitches than I reduced. I don't know, but the body is very, is very big. <laughs> so I need another one that actually fits, but the cumulus blouse that I have, I can also tuck in like skirts or just high waist trousers, so it's not that bad. But um, I need another one because the second one I've knitted was a beautiful one in Dusty Artichoke. I sold it for the price of the yarn I've used and the shipping costs to a friend in the US because the color was perfect for her. We met in Ireland when we traveled on a guided tour on a bus. <laughs> she saw me knitting and just kept asking about the sweater and if I can knit her a sweater and I knew that uh, with my job schedule right now I wouldn't finish a sweater in an appropriate time frame for her to actually wear it that winter. So um, I just offered her to send it for and uh, sell it to her for the cost of the yarn and the shipping costs. And she was very happy about it. And yeah, I think it's a blessing to gift um, knitted pieces to friends. So it made me happy that she loved it so much and she sent me a picture. So yeah, the, the color is very flattering for her. But I needed another cumulus blouse, so here we go. <laughs> and what I also brought are these two... What? Are these two Sunday sweaters here. One is a chunky version, and the other one is, uh, is a soft silk mohair version. First to the chunky version, I have to organize myself here. And here is the chunky version, the Sunday sweater chunky edition in heavy merino camel and the soft silk mohair knitting for olive caramel. Frodo, how do you like it? Frodo is here, I don't know if you can see him. Frodo, come. Yeah, yeah. Think I'm my hair baby. Yeah. So I think he approves. Um, this is my go to sweater for like. Real blouses with a collar, 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 with a collar, and um, long sleeve shirts with a turtleneck. I like that. Um, to just have something to stick out here and here. Yeah. And I, I think you can see what I mean by this is very flattering around the neckline because um, it's an interesting style and not just a simple sweater, but very easy to knit. So it looks refined and it's very easy as well, so cool combo. So this is the <laughs> so this is the um, Sunday sweater mohair edition that I've knitted in two strands of knitting for olive marshmallow yellow, soft silk mohair, and I just. I think it's like a ray of sunshine when you put it on. I'm a fan. Du auch, Frodo? You too, Frodo? You like it? You like the sweater? <laughs> I find that I have quite the list of garments I want to finish for spring and summer. 
because I'm not buying any knitwear, but I'm making it instead. Um, I'm so excited for these pieces that I'll be knitting and wearing and combining. So sometimes I'm in my daydreams of the garments I want to knit and finish. So on my list for spring and summer garments that I want to knit is the Novice Cardigan <laughs> Mohair Edition. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> You know, it's kind of a pattern for me that when I finished one chunky version that I liked, I am taking on the challenge of knitting the mohair version <laughs> because it takes longer, but I know what I'm doing. So I find that rewarding as well. But yeah, I'll be knitting the Novice Cardigan mohair version in the Mushroom Rose version by the Knitting for Our Love Soft Silk Mohair. I just find that all these dusty rose and mushroom rose, rose clay um, yarns are very flattering with my skin tone and I like to wear them over like whites or dresses and yeah I like this color also it goes well with my nail polish and this is one of the next projects I'm working on keep you posted about that And now let's talk about slow knitting. Just take a breather with me here. I think this is very important to realize how you are breathing because breath basically is the energy that keeps us going. Our body needs breath, our body needs oxygen to keep going. And so often we're breathing quite superficially. We're using only the upper part of our body and not our whole system and not our whole body to breathe into. I took singing lessons for about a year and a half and my singing teacher told me that it's important to breathe into your belly. That when you find that your shoulders are working, that you're breathing only superficially, only with the upper part and it's a very stressed and tense breathing and not this deep and relaxing breath relaxed breathing that you um, change to once your belly really pops out when you're breathing so no shame there it's important to find that rhythm where you can it helps to place like one hand on your low body and the belly and one hand on your chest and then just take a moment to just find where your breath is located. Yeah, <laughs> no surprise here, my, my chest is rising. And I just want the breath to go further into my belly. So if you don't find this weird, just come and practice this with me here. Let the breath flow into your lower body, into your belly, and just let it rise a bit. Let it just flow gently and sense how your hand is just rising a bit on your belly here. Just one more. And it really helps if you breathe out on this F sound when you place your front teeth a bit on your lower lip and just do this sound, just as pronouncing the letter F. This helps to regulate the outstream of the oxygen, that you're not just letting it all out at once, but that it's kind of um, a bit obstructed and that helps to regulate the flow of oxygen. This technique really helps your nervous system to wind down and it's working very quickly. So why not use it? Why not integrate this technique of intentional breathing into your daily life? I try to do this when I sense that I'm stressed, when I sense that my body isn't getting enough oxygen. And how do I feel that? I'm very sensitive about the upper part of my body, especially the neck. Like when I feel tension in my neck and my jaw, I know that it's time to adjust my breathing because once you breathe differently, your whole body relaxes, your muscles relax and 
the oxygen flow increases, thus the bloodstream changes, and your muscles, they have higher blood circulation, which helps them to relax better. So this is a very cheap and easy method, and you can integrate this very quickly and easily into your daily life. And you can also do it like in the car, even when you're not driving preferably. Why not just taking your time to place a hand on your lower body and just find your breath where it's located and get it a bit more into your um, into the center part of your body by just letting your lower hand rise. It's a good way of checking that you're succeeding when you feel that hand a bit uh, rising a bit. And then just take time for three deep intentional breath breaths. And I will promise you that you will feel differently. If you're feeling a bit dizzy or lightheaded after this exercise, it's completely normal because your brain is getting is treated by a lot more oxygen than before and the muscles in your neck and your head or the upper part of your neck um, are relaxing and this may cause the feeling of dizziness but it's completely harmless it's even a good sign like when I feel that I'm smiling a bit and I try to be very gentle with me here because it's good for me to take deep breaths and to sense that my body needs this. Another important aspect of slow living is taking intentional breaks. And I mean not only at the end of the day when you can collapse on your sofa or couch, but in between, like taking two minutes time to reflect on what you just experienced, to evaluate how you're doing so far in this day, how you feel, to just ask yourself the question, how am I doing really? What am I needing right now? And to just celebrate when you had a good phone call, when you responded to a difficult email, or when you just had a good trip to the supermarket. It's important to take these times to just take the time, two minutes, and reflect on what just happened, what you did so far, how your day is going. Also important is to just sit and be and breathe, to just seize the moment and take one minute without distraction. And one minute can be very long. So just take this minute for yourself and put away your cell phone, shut the door and just sit and breathe. And if thoughts are coming and crossing your mind like, um, I need another trip to the supermarket or my to-do list needs to be finished or I need to respond to this WhatsApp. Just perceive that these thoughts are coming, sort of knocking at your door, but you can decide to let them pass because thoughts are like butterflies. Just let them flow by, just let them be. Don't argue with them. Don't put yourself into interaction with them, don't debate with them, just let them pass. It's like a wave coming, building up, and then it's going very naturally. When you're not listening to these thoughts, when you're not stepping into conversation with yourself here, they will go. And in the last episode, I talked about my morning routine, which basically consists of workouts, um, time outside going running then breakfast and reading the bible having quality time and my friend she asked me how do you do that the answer is quite simple i get up very early so i need two to three hours for this morning routine and i take that time yes this means that my alarm rings very early in the morning but i just like what's lying ahead so I don't mind getting up early. I like to run when the sun's coming up, when the birds are chirping in spring. And I like an intentional breakfast, taking my time to prepare porridge with all the toppings I like. And then just to sit in my corner with a candle and read the Bible, spend time in prayer and reflecting with God and preparing for the day. So I think that's important for me and that's why I decide to get up early. Then it's important to get enough sleep. High quality nighttime sleep is very important for emotional and mental health, also for physical health. There are studies 
that state that the average amount of hours per night, sleeping per night, should be seven. Of course, that variates also um, regarding the season of life you may be in with young kids or a tough seasons, stressful seasons, taking care of other people uh, that may um, variate a bit. But you have to look after yourself there because nighttime sleep is also an important marker for how you're doing. So good nighttime sleep is very important. And I found that it helps me to not have too many dates, even cool dates or fun dates with friends in the late hours of the afternoon or even in the, um, in the hours of the evening per, per week. I take about one hour before going to bed where I prepare myself, where I find time for this routine of putting on a flannel pajama, placing on some some nighttime cream with a good smell, for instance, lavender. Then I take out my knitting, and knit a few rows in bed while listening to an audiobook or just reading a chapter in a novel. Nothing over exciting, no films uh, that are too exciting, no discussions, important messages on WhatsApp or whatsoever or Instagram. What you couldn't solve during the day, you most likely won't solve shortly before going to bed. So just take your time to rest and help your body to prepare itself for the night time. It's always helpful to know your stress signals, your foreboding signals that are like um, an innate alarm system of your body where it tells you, hey, it's not going so well lately. Take good care of yourself. There are like three stages, like a traffic light, with the green stage where everything is in order and you have enough energy, then the orange phase, which is critical, especially when it's lasting too long, and the red phase, the where you have to hit the brakes and where you need to find help immediately. But it's better to be attentive to these signals, even when you're crossing the line from the green stage to the orange one, which happens in life, but then it's important to find a way out of it again. So what are these stress signals? They can happen on three different areas. One is the cognitive area, like the thoughts you're having, what's going on inside your head, which thoughts do you cultivate, then emotional stress signals, what's going on in your emotions, what are you feeling, does something change, do you have mood swings, and then on your body. Thought-wise, stress signals could be worries or anxiety that you cannot distance yourself from. As I said earlier, thoughts are like butterflies or fish, but I think butterflies are more beautiful. They're coming and they're going. And only if you look at one closely and go into interaction with it, then it will grow and it will become more important because your brain notices it and then it produces emotions and you feel changes in your body because you're talking to yourself here. But most importantly, these things are only arising from yourself. Like they're not real, you're producing them. So they are there, they are thoughts, you're human, you're having thoughts, but they do not reflect the reality around you. It's what's going on inside of you. How you might, might have um, like, like you're responding to something that's going on inside, like you're responding to a thought before that's, that you weren't aware of, or something in your surroundings. But it's been produced by yourself, inside of you. So you, you can also choose, do I want to listen to this one or not? So you can choose if you want to let the butterfly go or if you want to look at it more closely. But when you're in a stressful season, it's not that easy to distance yourself from these thoughts. And when you find that this happens on a regular basis and that you cannot find rest from a busy thought life, it's important to get help. Then there are emotional signals and emotions are human and it's important that we have them. Emotional stress signals are irritation and nervousness. Like when you feel that you're a bit cranky or angry or nervous all the time and that you don't find your balance that easily it's important to take a look at that like what's producing that why isn't it going away why isn't it changing 
physical signals can be dizziness and pain. There are different areas where people respond to stress on their body. Um, it's like the surface that mirrors um, that stress is at hand and people have different areas where they feel it. Like for me personally, I can feel the dizzy spell, like the dizzy spin when I have too many thoughts in my head, my body responds and I feel very dizzy and I basically have to lie down. So th this is a very important stress signal. signal. So this is a very important stress signal for myself. Other people have stomach pains, belly aches, um, back pain, neck pain, migraines, headaches, uh, like this sort of thing. Also sleeplessness and restlessness are important signals that have to be looked at when they're not going away because it's normal to have mood swings and stomach aches and back pain. That itself doesn't indicate like a high rate of stress. But when it's not going away and when you feel a combination of different signals in these various areas, it's important to consult like a psychologist you trust or go um, to a first screening with a therapist. That's very important, I think. And you have to take yourself seriously here because when you're traveling at the airplane, which we did most recently, so this metaphor is sort of stuck inside my head, is with the oxygen masks. They always say, place your mask on nose and mouth first for yourself before helping others. If you don't get yourself the provision you need of oxygen and energy, how are you able to survive and how are you able to help others? This may help at a short term basis, but on the long run, you always need to take these breaks, even if they are two minutes on a regular basis and help filling up your cup. Like that, these things that help um, getting in a balanced position again, because you want to be stable and healthy at a long-term basis to be able to help others to be there to let your light shine it's just it doesn't work only on the short run we're not designed to be sprinters like not a metaphor here but people like to sprint that's fine but we humans we need to like function and be here on earth for i don't know 90 years or so i don't know what's the life expectation right now on average but um, you you want to have a good life in these years. You want to be healthy and well, and it helps that you take yourself seriously and to look what you need and to find these things and to place them in your daily life routine. Another metaphor here is when you're driving in your car, you need to make sure you have enough gas or petrol. So you need to go to the petrol station at a regular basis to just um, take good care of your car so that it can take you the distance you need and when you're always in this red area It's obvious that your car will break down at some point and then you have to deal with it So it's easier and smarter to check your car to take, take good care of it and to know that You can drive the distance you need to because your tank is filled and it's the same with humans If we don't have enough energy, we're only coming to a certain point, but not further and we're not designed for these short-term distances. We need energy for longer distances. And we get that by taking good care of ourselves, sleeping, eating, drinking well, enough water, taking time to breathe, to reflect, to just be. Especially when you're dealing with so many impressions per day, because when we step outside and when we're working and when we're getting messages and seeing social media, there's so much going on that needs to be processed and you need to take that time. What also helps me taking good care of myself is that I know that I'm precious to, to God, to, to the Lord, that I know that he wants good for me and that he wants to enable me to, to think of myself in, as he does over me. So God has such precious thoughts over you. So why are you often so mean to yourself? So as a Christian, it's also very important for me to take my time and sit with God, read the Bible, pray, reflect, let him be part of my emotional and my thought life, which means that I'm talking with him, that I'm laying down all my worries, my anxiety, my thoughts about the day, and that I want to immerse myself with his dreams and his thoughts um, over my life. He's my life coach, my mentor, 
So when I sit and, for instance, pray Psalm 23, it helps me to really picture himself as my good shepherd, as the one who guides me and who wants to provide for me. And because he loves me so much, it's important that I take this seriously and take care of myself. When the one who designed you loves you so much, why would you be mean to yourself and hurt yourself? So from this perspective, it makes good sense to integrate things that fill my cup, that help me live a good and healthy lifestyle and not on a short term basis, but for the long run. And because we are not living only for ourselves at a single person island, it's important to ask for help and to get support from people around you when you feel you're struggling. For me, it's asking friends to take Frodo for a walk, to shop some groceries for me, ask them to pray for me and give them like topics they can pray for. Just let them into my thought life, into the reality and the things that I'm struggling with. Because how would they know if I don't ask them for help and for support? And this results in mutual affection and being seen and loved and it's good and it's so beautiful if friends know they are so valuable to me i open up to them and i let them be part of my life also of my inner life and they can support me and this feels good it feels good to be needed and to actually be able to help and this enables us to enter in this very cool dynamic of receiving without the need to give and giving freely because you are encouraged and have more energy and then i like just some small treats for me and when i don't do this often i know that i'm skipping important things for me um, this is like very small things like doing my nails when i'm not doing my nails for a long time i know okay some me time is missing here i need to ground myself i need to sort of get into a relationship with myself again here to take good care of me like putting on a face mask or doing my nails and I like having cute nail polish on, but this is also a very tangible sign of, hey Sandra, you looked after yourself, that's good. And preparing soul food, like know what dish you can make yourself and that you really love. And maybe it's also healthy. For me, it's veggie lasagna. I like just cutting all the zucchini, the tomatoes, prepare the sauce, the bechamel sauce, and then just preparing a very nice dish with lots of cheese <laughs> and dig in and enjoy a very cool meal I prepared for myself. And I took time for that. And I didn't just buy like a frozen pizza or so. I, I have a dish that's very nourishing to me, body, mind and soul. And you know, when we have a tough and tight schedule, we most likely skip the good things first and that shoots us out of balance quite quickly because you need the other things as well it's no luxury it's a necessity so if you have a balance like a scale here with good things and necessary things and you cut down the good things because you need more time for the necessary things then these get too heavy and you get dragged down with it so Put also an emphasis on the good things, the positive things, the things that fill your cup, that give you energy. So you are on a long term, you are at a balance, at a good balance with yourself. And this good things can be um, enough sleep, fun things, things where you can play because also adults need time to play, um, knitting, seeing friends, doing your nails, preparing a good and healthy meal for you. Or I don't know, treating yourself to, um, to some time with the hairdressers, to celebrate a new haircut. This is also thing, this is also something that keeps you out of balance for a longer time. And also earlier today I was reflecting on the past month and I was asking myself the question, did I rest enough? So much was happening and I like to live a colorful life, but I also need time to just rest and breathe and be what I told you about. Just sit with me and sit with God and just be okay with uh, staring at the ceiling and just taking my time. It's a luxury, but also a necessity. So I like to think of it as an important aspect I need to integrate. And that's why I'm talking about it so much here. Um, 
but we forget about it so easily, right? So ask yourself these questions. Am I taking enough time? Am I taking myself seriously? What do I need really? What do I really need right now? Do I need rest? Do I need activity, sports, for instance, movement? Or do I need social activity? Do I need to talk to a friend? Do I need to call a friend? Um, do I want to do something fun and go out? It's important to, to evaluate that first before just running into it. Do I need quality time or did I take enough quality time the past month with others, with God, with myself? And also to think about what happened last month, like what happened in the beginning of the month? We forget about it so quickly and we have a phone so we can skip through the photos on our phone. For me that works because I love taking photos. It's part of how I process what's going on. So I'm flipping through the photos and then I take time to write into my journal what am I proud of what happened last month? What do I want to change for the next month? Um, what was good? What did I enjoy? Yeah, it's, it's good to not just let it pass by, but to take the good things and to root them. And in my job and as a leader, I'm learning more and more that life is a process. And it's about this path and this process of growth and of constantly changing because when you're knitting a sweater, you just, at some point, you just have to keep, to keep going, to just knit further. And there might be some stitches that are um, not in line or that you're, yeah, that you don't like that much, but nothing's perfect here. And it's about what you're creating and how you're growing while creating it. And that's so good. It's important to, to look at the outcome as well, yes. But I find that it's about the things you cultivate and you learn while you're staying on the path, while you're growing, while you're creating something. And I sense that we grow more when we perceive and celebrate the process. We have always choices to make, possibilities to take, and of course there are responsibilities, but also new possibilities. And I like to think of my way of um, studying and learning and knitting as a process where it's not about failure but about um, encouragement <laughs> so this is the encouraged knitting podcast but encouraged living podcast because how could you fail when you look at the choices you made and the life you're living you can always choose you, you can always decide what do I want to do when you're on this path and when you decide for one thing you don't want, then you can register that and take that into account and then adjust the path or maybe adjust your perception of the topic ahead of what you're dealing with. And, and then you just you keep going or keep growing more likely with all these things that add to it. And you can look at it like this, that you want to focus on the outcome for instance, the sweater you see on the pattern and this is what you want to knit. Or you can focus on the process of knitting a sweater and all these stages where you're struggling with um, descriptions and where you need help or the places you've knitted the sweater, the people you've talked to while knitting it. And this is more colorful and the other one, the other path, like focusing on the outcome, can place a lot of pressure on you. For instance, it's a very simple example when you want to cook, you cook a dish and you get the opinion, oh, I don't like what you cooked. You can think, I, don't, I, I cannot cook, I am not able to do that. Or today I didn't like it so much, but I can adjust it and I can try something else and I will try tomorrow and then I will like it. And take your time when you do something differently to notice and to intentionally, um, to intentionally find what you're doing differently and then celebrated that you tried and that you did it. I've learned so much from knitting. Knitting is a process and I'm human, so I'm making mistakes. And mistakes are part of the gown that I'm wearing and I'm not ashamed of it. I celebrate it because it says I didn't give up. I knitted on and I learned from that. You can see in my sweaters that I have this uh, evolution of, <laughs> of growth that things um, or mistakes I've made in the early stages I'm not making now and I'm trying new patterns and new <clears throat> new yarn combos and getting a bit bolder in it 
because I stayed on. With my first garment, I didn't place the pressure on me to focus on the outcome and to have the best possible knitted sweater that looks exactly like the picture on the pattern. I just wanted to start and I saw it as a process and part of this process is that you um, have to unravel a part or that the, some stitches are uneven <laughs> or that even some parts are wrong and that's fine because it doesn't mean that you cannot knit or that you cannot do something you're trying. It means that you're human and that imperfection is part of human life. And it's so sad when people only see like the outcome and they are so hard to themselves and they put, put so much pressure that they lose the joy um, of celebrating the process, of just um, intentionally rewarding themselves, of intentionally looking at all these different stages on the path till the outcome and that they are um, discouraged by it because we are our biggest critics but we can also be our biggest encouragers if we just change our mindset from mindset of fear of failure to celebrate celebration of growth <laughs> sorry my phone just died <laughs> so I uh, had to get my computer and plug it in there and I just took it as an excuse to um, to have Frodo come over for a brief visit. <laughs> okay, so I want to live as a full-time encourager because I'm just taking good care of myself and I feel so encouraged by God and how by how he loves me. And God has so so many encouraging and loving thoughts about each and every one of us. And once we've entered into a relationship to him by Jesus Christ, it's, it's just our, um, our responsibility to perceive ourselves through his eyes, through his heart, and to let this shift our mindset. And then I perceive myself as a loved child of God and I can live like that because he speaks it over me. And by this encouragement, I'm enabled to let encouragement flow and by let, like, like letting light shine, not because I have so much energy, energy to produce this light, but because I'm reflecting his light and his love that he's placing upon me. So if you guys want to stay on now, I want to share some impressions of our trip to Israel with you. It's been a very exciting week. We've stayed in Israel for seven days and spent some time in Tel Aviv, then, then traveled on to Jerusalem and then did a day trip to the lake of the Sea of Galilee, which is basically a lake and the sea, so I want to say lake, but it's the Sea of Galilee. We started our trip in Tel Aviv. I have a good friend living there. We finished high school together and I just enjoyed the time I got to spend with her. Um, she was our tour guide and just um, showed us her favorite restaurants and places to see and we went to the seaside, the Mediterranean coast, the beach in Tel Aviv and the old city, Tel Aviv Jaffo. And yeah, just went to the markets, the Carmel market is very interesting, a very busy place with um, a lot of yeah, senses of spices in the air and yeah, interesting things you can buy, very sweet desserts you can like baklava you can buy so um, we feasted on that and enjoyed like this time um, and the weather although we had quite mixed weather we had um, lower temperatures than we expected so layers and midwear were perfect and in Jerusalem it was even colder because the city of Jerusalem is in the mountains, is a bit higher. And I was so glad I took my zipper sweater with me. So the zipper sweater was also a go-to garment for the journey to Tel Aviv and to Jerusalem especially. From Tel Aviv we traveled to Jerusalem and that's a very busy place. I've never seen anything like the city of Jerusalem before. There are several cultures and ethnical groups living at a very small, relatively small space. And there's these, the part of the old city that's surrounded by the old city wall, which has been adjusted and torn down um, over various centuries. And in the Bible, there's also like 
um, chapters where they rebuilt the wall, where the wall was torn down, when parts of the city had to be rebuilt. So it's a very, um, a very vivid place to be in, a very, um, very jam-packed place with history, but also with uh, the smell in the air and the things you can buy, the noises you hear. And for me as a highly sensitive person, I needed, I desperately needed some time to work through all these impressions when we got home because when we were there it was almost no time for that we stayed at an airbnb that had a very cool terrace where a rooftop terrace where you could overlook the city and i just enjoyed sitting there with a coffee and just letting my gaze wander and think about all the stories that took place in the city but there was um rest was scarce there because uh, we wanted to see so much and experience so much and we only had two whole days in Jerusalem so that's not a lot for uh, a city that's so rich with history and impressions and things you can experience. We did a guided tour through the old city in Jerusalem. It was called On the Footsteps of Jesus and it was very good because um, it, it put emphasis on the places that I mentioned in the Bible, especially like the last state, like the last uh, paths of Jesus, when he visited the Garden of Gethsemane, the Mount of Olives, um, and also the Via Dolorosa and the Church, Church of Sepulchre, where you can see parts of the Rock of Golgotha. And yeah, that was very impressive for me. And I think for my husband and I as, and as well, the Garden of Gethsemane, to see these olive trees that are approximately 800 to 1000 years old and to think of this as the landscape that Jesus saw was very special to us. And now we're heading towards Easter. And yeah, when I'm reading the, the history, the story of Easter and um, the chapters in the Bible right now, it's for me, it has a whole new meaning because before my inner eye, I can see the scenery. I can imagine what it might have looked like. And um, this is very special to me. Hi from Jerusalem. We're just here overlooking the old city and it's a very dramatic sky. And it's just an overwhelming experience to be here. And I can only recommend traveling to Israel and to see Jerusalem. From Jerusalem? We took a day trip to the Sea of Galilee and to Nazareth. It was a guided tour again, which I find very important in this country. Otherwise, you will miss a lot of information when traveling without it. Um, and I myself don't like to read all these things up and have like only po pocket guides. I find it more lively and more authentic when people who live there are the guides and they tell you so much about the culture and also the stages the country is in right now but also the hope for the future and yeah it makes it so much so much richer i think and we traveled to capernaum where we visited ruins of the synagogue where jesus possibly taught and preached and also the home of the apostle paul the Sea of Galilee was beautiful. It was so special for me to be at that place. And my husband and I also took our shoes off and tried to walk on the water. <laughs> we, we didn't quite make it. <laughs> no, we, um, we could walk on the rocks, but not on the water, obviously. But yeah, it's just, it's just why not try? But Jesus did. And that was special to me to, um, to just think of it as the place where Jesus and Paul had this... Um, this important encounter, emotional encounter. I don't know if you see, if you know the TV show, The Chosen, but in series three, there's also a scene where they shoot scenes that are supposed um, to be at the Sea of Galilee. And I recently watched these episodes. So they were in my head when I was at this, at the scenery. And I just, I felt very touched by it. I felt very moved by the thought that Jesus had this, a very emotional encounter with the Apostle Paul and when Paul was had been enabled to walk on the water which was a huge leap in his faith. Right and from the Sea of Galilee uh, we came back to Jerusalem and from that we went to Tel Aviv again 
and just spend two more days there with my friend and um, yeah, saw very interesting places and ate tasty food, <laughs> a lot of food. And I was uh, a lot of hummus, obviously, and falafel. I enjoyed the food there. I, I thought like after the second meal, I cannot eat another bunch of hummus, but I did. <laughs> I think we feasted on it like for three, uh, three days. It was, it was amazing. And I must say it was just such a, such a blessing to see this country and to experience it. And it has left a mark forever. <laughs> And when I created the photo book, I just thought um, how many rich and precious memories this, these are. Um, yeah, traveling, especially to Israel, has truly broadened, widened my horizon for these chapters in the Bible, but also for my imagination of how the landscape might have looked and um, the understanding for the people and the country and the culture. So. Yeah, it's very cool. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Encourage Knitting with me here and found inspiration in the topics that I've talked about. And I'm so happy to be here and I hope that you're encouraged, be blessed. See you next time. Bye.